Let me give you a definition of dominion real quick. Sovereign or supreme authority, the power of governing and controlling, the power to direct, control, use and dispose at your own pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, you were created by God to rule the works of his hands. God didn't ordain for all these resources to be controlled by the devil's kids. But when a believer has low spiritual self-esteem, they can never obtain what God has for them. So you can't go further than you can see. You can't become or obtain what you don't have the capacity to believe for. So God leveled the playing field for every believer. When you got born again, he gave you the measure of his faith. Now, as you hear the word and you meditate on the word and you submit yourself to a teaching priest so that the word of God grows in you, the spirit of God moves through the word that you deposit on the inside of you. The Bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth fruit. So what is God after? His investment, his allocation of unique gifts in you that your life would be fruitful. God is after investment. And he wants a return on that investment. He gives talents to his servants. The Bible gives the parable about this, this Lord, this master that gives money to his servants. And he goes away for a pre, an undetermined time. He comes back and he expects an accounting of what have you done with what I've given you? What have you done with the money that I gave you? Ladies and gentlemen, he rewards those who were productive. But the Bible says the one servant who took the Lord's money and buried it. And when his servant came to give an account, he pulls it out of the dirt and he gave it back. And he says, now, well, where's my return? This is in my own words. Where's the return on my investment? And the servant says, I knew you were a hard man and you reap where you haven't sowed. So out of fear, I just buried it. And that's what a lot of people do when they don't have this understanding of the power of self-awareness. They just bury their gifts. They, they bury their uniqueness. And then some people who find out what that uniqueness is, they give it over to the world to serve the enemy. But thanks be unto God, that's not your testimony. That's not your testimony. Let me say it again. That's not your testimony. And now what is, what did the master do with the servant who wasn't productive, the Bible says that he ended up in a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. He talked about hell. He's talking about a real literal hell. Then he said, take from him and give to the one that was the high producer. So thanks be unto God. I can't see you physically, but in the spirit, I'm looking at high producers. I'm looking at people who in business thrive. I'm looking at people who in their professional careers are on the uptake, that are on the ascension. I'm looking at you, you are highly productive. Your family is highly productive. Your children are highly productive. Why? Because everything is reproducing after its own kind. And when you got born again, you're now reproducing the God kind. And that same creative, productive ability in God is on the inside of every one of his children. So today, if you haven't been as productive as you should have been to this point, the, the word of God is coming to shake you and make you aware God's got a plan for your life. Don't you dare write yourself off. Well, pastor, I've messed up and, and, and I've messed up and, and I've messed up some more. The Bible says a righteous man, a just man falls seven times and get back up again. See, let me just say this. This is going to bless you. God never abandons who he chooses. He'll abandon what men choose. He'll never abandon who he chooses. Man, that's good. Okay, listen to this. I know I told you to I'd turn to Isaiah 45 and 5, and I want to read that, but we got we to address that statement I just made. Isaiah 45 and 5 says, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God besides me. Stop right there. There's no other God but God. There is nobody else but him. He's sovereign he sits on the throne. He is our heavenly father. But thanks be unto God, 
that Jesus is the vine and we are the branch. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. That's why the communion is so important for every believer to partake in because literally the very body and blood of Christ resonates on the inside of us. You, got, you have God's DNA in you. you. You literally have God's, the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins. Praise God. When Jesus told the Jews that unless they drank his blood and ate of his flesh, they'd have no part in him, they, they were thinking cannibalism. <laughs> they were wondering, this is a hard saying, praise God. But that's what happens when you don't have the spirit of God working in your life. You can't comprehend the things of God because these things are spiritually discerned. But aren't you glad you've got the spirit of God in you? You possess the mind of Christ. You have access to the wisdom of God. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Turn your Bible very quickly to John 15, 16. Isn't this wonderful? You need to make sure that you spread this posting to people you know. You got nephews and nieces and young people in your life. They're saying, what is my purpose? What, what is my meaning? What it, and you, you can always tell when young people, and I'm going to say young people because sometimes older people don't know either, they get caught up in things that you know are not good for them. That's only an indication they're not confident in what their purpose is. So I want to encourage you to share this teaching. Even if you just play it in the background, the word knows how to reach them. Listen to this, John 15, 16. This is Jesus talking. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Listen to this. You have not chosen yourself, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. Okay, now we got to stop here for a second. Let's read this together. Ready, read. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go forth, go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me make the statement again. God never abandons whom he chooses. Does not he say, I will never leave you nor forsake you? But we see in scripture, if God didn't choose, he's not obligated to that commitment. Let's, let's, let's pay close attention to the verse we just read. Three things God ordained concerning you. Remember what I'm telling you. You should be taking notes. These are three things that John 15 and 16 says that God commits to you. Number one, that you must go and bring forth fruit. You have an obligation to be fruitful. That isn't just producing children. It means that the work of your hand should have productivity. Your life should be a life of service to others. You should show your commitment, not only to God, but to your fellow man. So number one, you must go and bring forth fruit. Number two, these are three things that God has ordained concerning you. You should stand eternity. You should be producing works that withstand eternity. Let me help you understand something. Only what you do for God will last. The Bible says all the works of men will be submitted to fire. Stuff made of wood and stubble and hay is going to be burned up. But only what you do for God will be eternal. Are you hearing me? So in other words, when you stand before God and give an account, and there's several hundred thousand people behind you, and God, you say, God, who are all these people? These are, these are all the people who came to know me, who came back in relationship with me, who got up out the hospital bed for me through your witness, through your life, through what you represented in the earth. Man, that's good stuff. Let's, let's see the third thing, to get all your prayers answered. So number one, concerning you, God has set you aside, ordained you, that you would go and be fruitful. Number two, that your works would withstand eternity, meaning the devil will not be able to destroy what you produce. Number three, you get all your prayers answered because getting your prayers answered is your lifeblood. If any man will, let him ask of God. He that asketh, receiveth. The one that seeks, finds. The one that knocks on the door, that's the one who will receive the, have the door being opened to them. <sighs> 
we, uh, Kingdom Living Church, in case you don't know our history, there is a 16 acres of land that we developed over a five year period that we took from being dilapidated to being immaculate. And we never lost the property. God just converted it to seed. And I'm saying that because it's always a faith encourager to see what God did through Kingdom Living Church. I don't know if anybody anywhere has got a testimony. They took an old abandoned lumber yard and turned it into a house of God that was pristine. And the power of God showed it. I drop by it now and God says, it's a seed. You planted it. I converted it to seed form. So now I'm looking for the harvest. See, because the God that promised said, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. So Kingdom Living Church family and friends, we got a harvest that will exceed your wildest imagination. This isn't a matter of you deserving it or being worth it. It's just what God has ordained for you. Not to whom much is given, because this what God has given is going to be so amazing. Much is required. I've been believing God for about 5,000 members. When I say 5,000 members, 5,000 people who on a weekly basis are connected to Kingdom Living Church. Not just everybody in the local, but over the airwaves. Because God has opened up a new effectual door of ministry. We can touch the world for Jesus Christ right here in Grand Blank. I never imagined it. But what the devil meant for evil, virus, God work it together so that we can touch more lives. Last week, 6,000 people came in contact with Kingdom Living Church. Right through this broadcast. And your seed helped make that possible. See, I'm so confident in God. We're planning to come together soon, physically. God gives the plan on how that's going to work. I'm not relying on human intellect. Here's a promise I have from God. If you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. So I'm confident I got a covenant right to have my steps ordered by God. You can't take that position unless you're confident and have a self-awareness that God is working through you. So I know he's working through me. I don't have to feel God to know. I just know because of what the scriptures have said. See, this is stirring your faith. If you're looking for a feeling, Lord, if this is you, confirm it. Stop doing that. Take him at his word. Take him at his word. God, you said that this would work out together. I don't see anything happening. Start, find the place where it's written and insert your name in the scriptures. I'm here to tell you, the word of God has the power in it to produce what it promises. We want to thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Living Church on YouTube. Feel free to press like and subscribe if this message bless you. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook as well. Thank you. Until next time. And remember, it's not about religion. It's about relationships.